Everyone has questions. Why am I here? Where will I go when I die? Is there really truth? But not everyone has biblical answers. Welcome to The Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study the Bible to draw closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Tom Brock. Welcome to The Pastor Study. Two months from now, yours truly is turning 60 years old. And I never thought that would happen because I thought the second coming of Christ was going to be in 1986. Boy, did I miscalculate. So I didn't think we'd all be here. But can I tell you what I've been thinking as I reach age 60? I've been, I, let me show you this picture. Here is a picture of my family when I was little. And there's dad, there's little old me, my sister Ruthann, Sharon, Mark, and my mom. And you know what I've been thinking lately? How America has changed since the 1950s. Uh, can, can we just talk about this for a minute? You know, when I was a little boy, there was a copy of Playboy under the counter at the drugstore. Today, your kids can push a button on a computer and access hardcore pornography. When I was a little boy in the 1950s, you turned on TV, you got Leave it to Beaver, Mr. Ed, Ozzie and Harriet. I don't need to tell you the filth you get when you turn on television today. I mean, it's not exaggeration to say what was an X-rated movie when I was a boy is now on broadcast television. That's not an exaggeration. Back in the 1950s, abortion was illegal. Today it's everywhere in America. Do you know that we abort every fourth baby in the womb in the United States? One out of four babies we kill? Also, when I was little, I remember, now and then you'd see a Down syndrome child. Do you know why you don't see hardly any people who are Down syndrome anymore? When they're detected in the womb, 90% of Down syndrome babies are aborted. Back in the 1950s, if you had a baby out of wedlock, that was kind of rare. Do you know how many babies in the United States today are born out of wedlock? 40%. When I was little, marriage was a man and a woman. Today, nine U.S. states have homosexual marriage. Did you see a while ago the horrible cover to Time magazine? Two, a close-up of two men kissing, and basically the cover article says, gay marriage is a done deal. I was talking with a friend of mine all about this, the, what's happening to America, and his point to me was, you know, the problem with America is not the abortionists and Planned Parenthood and the liberals and in the government. The problem with America is the church. If the church was the church, we wouldn't have this mess in America. I'll say it again. It boggles my mind that 95% of the Lutherans at the Minneapolis and St. Paul area synods voted last year to oppose the marriage amendment, to oppose keeping marriage one man and one woman. 95% of the Lutherans, the ELCA Lutherans, voted against that. The problem with America is the church. Again, back in the 1950s, virtually every denomination, Lutheran, Methodist, Episcopalian, Presbyterians, all the denominations taught you have to believe in Jesus to be saved. Today, well, you've got the head bishop of the Episcopal Church, Reverend Catherine Jefford Shorey, teaching that all the different religions, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, they're all different ways of saying the same thing. One more thing on this. Back in the 1950s, if you sent your teenager to Gustavus Adolphus Lutheran College or St. Olaf Lutheran College or Augsburg College, they'd get a Christian education. I wouldn't, I'm a Lutheran pastor. I would send no one to Concordia Moorhead, Augsburg College, St. Olaf College, or Gustavus Adolphus College. Uh, you know who the, the head of the St. Olaf religion department now is a Hindu. I know a conservative student at Gustavus Adolphus. 
He snuck a camera into this freshman orientation and he videotaped it. You can go to uh, YouTube, type Gustavus Adolphus freshman orientation. You will see two five-minute videos of the vile sex skits that were put on for the students for freshman orientation at Gustavus Adolphus. It'll make you so angry. It's just, it's almost pornographic. And the point is to get you to think that same-sex behavior is fine and just use a condom if you're doing heterosexual stuff. Not a word about being pure. I mean, so what has happened to America since the 1950s and even more tragically, what has happened to our Christian denominations? Well, give, let me give you the answer right up front and then we'll, we'll look at the scriptures. Here's what's happened to America. We are duped. And why are we duped? Because we don't test the spirits anymore. We don't test things against the written word of God. There's an old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We've got whole Christian denominations who no longer stand for scripture, so they're falling for everything, and now we have yoga classes in Christian churches. So let's do something. Would you take out a Bible? Turn with me to 1 John chapter 4, and let's learn how we have to test the spirits, test the voices of our culture, against scripture or will be duped all right first john chapter four let's let's pray first father we pray for america we would pray somehow you would turn us back to you it doesn't look good lord with all the gay marriage stuff going on now states are legalizing marijuana we've got churches that are on the wrong side on some of these issues lord we would pray that somehow you bring repentance and revival first to the church and then throughout our culture. And God, speak to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. The Apostle John writes this to the church. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Here's the first lesson today. It is our duty to test if somebody has a word from the Lord for you, you don't have just the right to test it. You have the duty to test it. You know, here, here's a pastor I know, and a, he's married, and another married woman comes into his office from the church. Pastor, the Lord has told me in a vision, you and I are to be lovers. <laughs> well, he knew the Bible, thou shalt not commit adultery. He knew God never gives Contra contradictory uh, visions to the scripture. So, you know, he knew, bye-bye. <laughs> you got to test everything. And, and here's what Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophesying, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. I believe in prophecy. I do believe it's possible God might give someone a word for you that is from the Lord. But I've been burnt enough by that kind of thing that I know you have to test it because not everybody who has a word from the Lord really has a word from the Lord. Some people get caught up in their emotions and they assume that must be the word of the Lord. Not necessarily. And here's why we have to test everything. Next part of the verse. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. In 1820... Joseph Smith has a vision of the angel Moroni giving him the Book of Mormon, and he thought this was a vision from God. Well, you've got to test it. Does the Book of Mormon jive with the Bible? It does not. In the late 1800s, a woman by the name of Mary Baker Eddy started to hear voices, and they were voices telling her about her new teaching. And she writes Mary Baker Eddy's Key to Science and Scripture. She starts the Christian Science Church, which is a cult, now, how did, were those voices from God that she heard? No, because she contradicts Scripture. Ellen White, also in the 1800s, started uh, having visions, and she came up with a religion called the Seventh-day Adventist. Now, Seventh-day Seventh Adventists, some of them are Christian people. They're not as off as Christian science or Mormonism, but they still have some unbiblical beliefs. My point is, if you have a vision, if you have a dream, Satan can give dreams. Do you know what it says? Paul says, Satan can appear as an angel of light. If you have an angel float into your bedroom tonight, that might not be an angel. That might be the devil masquerading as an angel of light. Okay, so who do, how do you know? How do you know if it's really a de demon or, or if it's an angel? You test everything against Scripture. Let me give you an example. 
years ago, and this was so real, I wonder if it didn't really happen. Years ago, I have a dream that I sit up in bed, and here's my dead sister, Ruthann, she died when she was 32, floating outside my window. And I said, Ruthann, and I said, is, is Jesus coming soon? Oh yes, Tommy, Jesus is coming soon. And then she started saying some stuff that was real unbiblical. And I woke up sitting up in bed, which has made me, it was so real. And I thought to myself, that was a $3 bill. Listen, just because someone says they have a word from the Lord or an angel floats, remember, Satan can uh, appear and masquerade as an angel of light. So who do you know what's what? You have to read your Bible and test everything against the written word of God. And if it doesn't line up, you chuck the vision. Let's look at verse 2. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Christ Jesus has come into the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is already in the world. What John is referring to here is probably the ancient heresy called docetism. Dakeo in Greek means to seem like. And the docetist heretics were teaching Jesus looked like a man, he seemed like a man, he appeared like a man, but he wasn't really a man because God wouldn't really become a man. And the early church condemned that as a heresy because if Jesus didn't really become a man and die really for man's sins, then we're not saved. So here's what you've got to maintain about Jesus. Uh, um, Jesus is fully God and fully man. You've got to maintain that he did truly become a man. Jesus is 100% man and Jesus is 100% God. And if you, if you get that mixed up, you become a cult. Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe Jesus is fully God, and the Docetists did not believe he's fully man. Jesus is fully God and fully man. Next verse. Little children, you are from God, and you have overcome them, the false teachers. For he, God, who is in you, is greater than he, the devil, who is in the world. Here's the next lesson. Ultimately, Christians will win. You know, heretics come and go. Most people don't even know what the docetists were. And I know that Mormonism is growing and Islam is growing. But ultimately, John says here, Christians, we win because we're on the side of God. And I know that Mormons and I know that Muslims sincerely believe what they believe. Well, you can sincerely be wrong. Again, you've got to test everything against Scripture. Verse 5. They, the false teachers, are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. Here's the next lesson. Mo don't expect most of the world to listen to you. You know, sometimes you talk to somebody about Jesus, and they really want to hear it, and they convert, and they accept Christ. That's glorious. But most of the time, I don't want to hear it. I said this before. Remember what C.S. Lewis said on how to wreck a fancy dinner party? Wait till those, there's a lull in the conversation and bring up the name Jesus. And watch people get nervous, look down into their plates, and change the subject. I saw a funny cartoon. Uh, two men are standing at a bus stop, and one man has a T-shirt has a that says, Let's talk about Jesus. And he says to his friend, It guarantees me an empty seat next to me every time. <laughs> well, uh, verse 6, we, Paul, John's talking about the apostles, are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us, the apostles. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. Here's the next lesson. Christians listen to the apostles, the apostolic writings. It's called the New Testament. You can tell who is a Christian and who isn't by, are they listening to the apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? Are they reading and following the scriptures? Listen, the United Church of Christ, the Presbyterian Church USA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the Episcopal Church in the United States, all those denominations now have embraced and blessed homosexual behavior. They have homosexual pastors, not celibate homosexual pastors, practicing homosexual pastors in those churches. Why? Because they're not listening to Scripture anymore. They're not following the apostles. They're following Oprah. 
they're following the American Psychiatric Association, they're following the voices of the culture, but they're not following scripture. You can tell who is a Christian and who isn't by are they following the apostles' teaching? And if they're not, even if they wear a collar, they're a false teacher. Okay. Years ago, when I was still in the ELCA Lutheran Church, gratefully, many of us have left that church for a more biblical side of Lutheranism. But back when I was an ELCA Lutheran, we were going to have a convention where it was going to get really messy on the convention floor on the homosexual issue. And so some people said, Tom, go across town, sit in this pastor's office, see if you can hash things out before the convention. I thought, oh, brother, because I knew we couldn't. But I went and I prayed. And I'm sitting in this pastor's office, and I put before him Romans chapter 1, very clear teaching that homosexual behavior is a sin. His response, the Holy Spirit is giving us a higher consciousness on this issue than the Apostle Paul had. Did you hear that? The Holy Spirit is giving us more wisdom on homosexuality than the Apostle Paul had when he wrote Romans chapter 1. That's called, I know better than God. Paul's wrong, I'm right. <laughs> Again, you know who's truly a pastor. Do they follow the apostles or do they follow the age? Uh, next verse, verse 6. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Here's the next lesson. You can only spot error if you know the scriptures. If you're not reading your Bible regularly, you are a target to be duped. You know, I've shared this before, but my dad, who you saw in that picture earlier, he ran the racetrack in Omaha. And when I was in college, my job was to go in the back room where they brought all the money from the bets, and you'd count money all day long. Now and then you'd count, and something felt funny, and you'd look at it, and it was a counterfeit bill. But the thing was, I had the real feel of a real dollar bill so well grained, ingrained in me, because I counted them all day. When you, when you hit one that, wasn't, that was too smooth, you could tell it was a phony. And here's my point to you. Get the feel of these pages between your fingers. I read my Bible every day, because when you know the scriptures, you're going to be able to spot Mormonism as a cult like that. you know. But if you don't know the Bible, you're going to be duped. Now, what I want to do for the rest of this sermon, let's do this. Let's test the spirits. I'm going to give you three popular notions in our culture, and let's see, are they from the Lord? Notion number one, God is whatever you need God to be for you. In other words, whatever you need, that's, that's who God is. <laughs> Years ago, here in Minneapolis was a horrible convention that drew liberal Protestants and Catholics from all over the country called Reimagining God Conference. And they felt that Father, Son, Holy Spirit language for God was too sexist, so they worshipped the goddess Sophia. You can walk into some churches now and the prayer is, Our Father and Mother who art in heaven. And that's because whatever you need, God is whatever you want him, her, it to be. Now, let's test that belief. Is that biblical? <laughs> no. You read the Bible and, you know, there's, it's, there's a saying, it's, it's possible to be so open-minded that your brains fall out. That's what's happening in some of our churches. And, and here is what the truth is. Is God whatever you want him or it to be? No. Here's the biblical response. There is one God in three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We have no right to change that. All right, let's do cultural notion number two and test it. All that matters is love. You know, it doesn't matter if you're married to your girlfriend. You can have sex as long as you love her. And it doesn't matter anymore if it's a man and a woman. If two women really love each other, okay for them to have sex. And a man and five women, polygamy. Well, as long as they really love each other, all that matters doesn't matter. All that matters is that it's a loving, committed relationship. Then it's okay. Is that true? <laughs> Listen, the Bible would say a man fornicating with his girlfriend outside of marriage, that's not love. 
Two women engaging in sexual intercourse, that's not love. Here's what the Bible says as we test this. Here's the truth. True love, according to the Bible, is one man, one woman within the safe commitment of marriage. Anything outside of that is sin. You know, I, I had a radio show, and here's an angry homosexual that calls in. Pastor Brock, if these two men are in love and they, it, it, they're both consenting, you know, what business is it of yours? Who are they hurting? And I said, they're hurting each other. 1 Corinthians 6 says, if you do that, you will not go to heaven. They're hurting each other. Last statement from our culture that we need to test. Everyone is a child of God. Churches teach that. Is that true? Well, it's true we're all creatures of God. God made everybody. Is it true everybody is a child of God? Listen carefully. Jesus said in John 8 to the Pharisees, You are of your father, the devil. Uh, Paul says this of all Christians and all mankind, Ephesians 2, We were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So did you get that? We don't start out as children of God. We start out as children of God's wrath. Whereas we start out as children of the devil, but you can become a child of God. How do you become a child of God? John chapter 1, verse 12. To all who received Christ, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So here's the biblical response. The truth is you need to have faith. You need to be in Christ to be a child of God. You know, I, I'm so glad Oprah is off the air, at least She's not on regular broadcast TV anymore. I think she's still on cable. But you can go to YouTube and type in Oprah and Jesus, and you can see these skits, these uh, segments. Oprah says she's a Christian. And then she says, I used to think Jesus came to earth to die for our sins. Now I see he came to earth to get us in touch with our own inner Christ consciousness. In other words, according to Oprah, we're all Christ. <laughs> Some woman, God bless her, stood up in the audience and she said, but Oprah, you know, Oprah was saying all roads lead to heaven, basically. And the woman said, but Oprah, Jesus said in John 14, 6, that he's the only way to heaven. And Oprah interrupts, and, uh, interrupts her and says, there can't be only one way. There can't be only one way. Well, you have a choice. Are you going to believe Oprah and the culture or the words of Jesus Christ? Well, let me close by this. I want to make a plea to you. Read your Bible daily. You know, I, I read of a man who loved to read his Bible. Yeah. Then he was in an explosion and his eyes were destroyed. So he learned Braille and he learned to read the Bible with his fingers. And he did that for years so much that finally he wore out the nerve endings on his fingers. And sadly, he's, he bends down to kiss the Bible goodbye. His tongue touches the page and he discovers he can read the Bible with his tongue. And he spent the rest of his life reading the Bible with his tongue. Listen, do you know how privileged you are to own your own Bible? There are people around the world that don't own one. Some have died to get their hands on them. And do you know how privileged you are to be able to read? Lots of people in this world can't read, but you can read. You've got your own Bible. Get it off the shelf and regularly read it, or you will be duped like the rest of our culture. Let me, let me just show you this again. Here's the picture of, of my family. And what I want to do is, here's Dad. I want to ask you, which of the people in this picture are you? Here we go. Here's Dad. He was a Roman Catholic, went to church every Sunday. Dad didn't own a Bible. He had a Catholic Missal book, but Dad didn't even own a Bible. Here's my mom, Lutheran. She had her Confirmation Bible. I remember seeing the Bible on the shelf as I grew up. I never once caught my mom reading the Bible. Here's my sister, Ruthann. She was six years older than me. When I was a little boy and I'd go into Ruthann's bedroom at night, she'd have her white confirmation Bible on her lap, and she read the Bible every night before she went to bed. And, and, and here's me. When I got my confirmation Bible at age 12, nobody told me to read it, but because Ruthann read her Bible every night, I started reading my Bible every night. I still do. Uh, here's my more liberal sister, Sharon. She believes in the Bible if she agrees with it. If she disagrees with the biblical teaching, well, the Bible's wrong, she's right. And you can pray for my brother, Mark. I, he doesn't go to church, to my knowledge, and I 
I would question whether he reads the Bible at all. My question is, which of the people in this, do you, do you not own a Bible? Do you own it, but you never read it? Or do you read the Bible regularly, and are you letting it change your life? One last thing to put on the screen. I'm going to ask you to make it. Would you do one of, one of a few things? Here we go. Number one, would you commit to this? I will read the Bible every day for the rest of this month. That's a little step. Can you, can you commit to that? Would, uh, you're going to read your Bible every day for the rest of this month. That's a tiny step. Maybe it'll get you reading it every night. Another thing I could ask you to do, get, buy the new ESV Study Bible. It's a great literal translation of Scripture. And it's got great study notes at the bottom of every page for you to help understand the difficult verses. So would you do that? Would you either commit to you're going to read the Bible every day for the rest of this month, or you're going to go buy a new ESV Study Bible and study the Scripture? We need to do that. That's why America is a mess, because people aren't doing that anymore. Amen. Welcome to the portion of the pastor's study where we now ask Pastor Brock to share with us his knowledge of Scripture and his insights to answer questions we have regarding the Bible, our Lord, and our everyday walk with him. Pastor Brock, we've got just a little over a minute left, so we're not going to go into a real in-depth question thing. Mm -hmm. But as America is moving further from God, what are Christians to do mm -hmm. would be my question. I, I think we need to pray and we need to speak up. And I'll say this, Jackie, one more thing, and I don't like saying this. I think we need to prepare for persecution. If gay marriage, uh, if, for instance, if you're a Christian photographer and you don't believe in photographing a lesbian wedding, you then can, can be fined. And I think we're going to see Christians start to go to jail for taking a stand in our culture. So everybody, Jesus said, if you follow me, you'll be persecuted. We need to be willing to suffer for Christ as we go into these strange days. And then, Pastor Brock, do we have a new viewing audience Well, now? we do. Some of you are seeing the show for the first time because for the next nine months or so, we have enough money to be on DirecTV and Dish Network. And we, we've been in Minneapolis for many years, and we're going to keep doing that. But uh, So welcome, and, and go to pastorstudy.org. You're going to watch our TV shows anytime, whether you have TV or not, at pastorstudy.org. Thanks for being with us this week. We pray that God would be with you, granting you his richest blessings until we're together again next time. Thank you for watching The Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the gospel of Christ because of our generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org. Or write The Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always.